let's start off with looking at schema by first looking at the dgraph documentation on schema. Uh, went to the documentation here and you can find it under query language um, and then down to schema and then I'm here on schema types. So there's two primary schema types or scalar types and UID type. The scalar type you can think of as literal values the UID type is basically a reference to another node. When a node is entered into DGRAPH, it automatically gets a UID. Um, this is not something that you control, it's controlled by DGRAPH. So every node will have a unique UID. So the default uh, schema type is a string for the, the scalar. Uh, you can also have int, float, um, they have a string here too, but the default is string. And uh, bool, date time, uh, geo, which is um, geo tagging, so you have a location, and then a special password type. Uh, the password type is a string and it goes into the database as encrypted. The thing about this is you cannot extract the password type. Um, there's a special command to check the password. Um, so you can check passwords, uh, you can hash it, store it in the database, and then check you know, the hash, send the hash to the query and check the password. It'll come back and tell you if it's uh, a match or not. Um, whether you use, use this is up to you. You can always store you know, passwords as a string and then retrieve that value and then do the comparison. Um, it's totally up to you, but there is a password type uh, if you wish to use that. If we scroll on down and go to indexing, this is a list of functions that work with the different types of indexes. So depending on what type of index you have, it will limit the type of functions that you can run against those indexes. Before we get started, I want to take a look at this uh, schema graph that I've put together. And I put this together to kind of illustrate um, how the schema is going to fit together. So these nodes are not necessarily the data, but refers to the schema. And if you notice, there's an open arrow and a closed arrow. The closed arrow shows the, the relationship going this direction. So from a account to the account node. And the open arrow is a reverse edge. So the edges can be reversed. So if I wanted to uh, pull up this particular node, say there's some data for this node, then I can reverse the edge and get back to this node. Uh, I need to mention that it's important to understand that this does not identify a node. A node is basically the sum of the edges or the predicates that are coming in and going out of the node. There is a uh, way to label nodes. So if there is a way to label or tag nodes for this purpose say want to label this as MS account, then there's a couple of way, different ways to do it. There's one, we can add a type uh, of string and then add the MS account as the value. But oftentimes a better way is just to make a predicate of MS account and you can set that to string or bool. It really doesn't matter what the, the value is. Um, it only matters that it has the edge of MS account. And there's a way to query the database that will allow us to get all of the um, nodes that has a specific edge. So that's a quick way to kind of query the data for a specific type of node. Also in that regard, uh, notice there's several nodes that have a name property or a name edge, or rather. This brings us into namespacing. So 
with name, it's pretty much always going to be a string. But if we had something like um, ID, then you know that could be a string or it could be a number, and you can't have two uh, edges, two predicates with the same name but different types. Um, you can really only have one predicate of a unique name. So in that regard, it would be best to delimit the name. So user.name, for instance, or user.email, uh, or br, br definition dot name, um, something to, to that effect so that, you know, the, the predicate that gets namespace for that uh, specific item. So let's go ahead and add a user. So let's get started with adding a user schema. So if we go to add predicate, we can add the username and let's uh, go ahead and do user.name. You can really use any valid character for a, a delimiter that you, you want, but um, dot syntax is, I think is, is very appropriate here. So we want that to be a string and we want to index this because we want to be able to search um, for for values of that. So we have different types of searches and this goes back to different types and the properties that they have. So if we want to tokenize, so the indexer uses the tokenizer, uh, we can use exact or hash. Uh, hash is, takes a hash of the string and searches against that. So it's good for bulk uh, text. Uh, we also have term, so we can search for specific terms uh, in the, the text. Uh, full text is, we'll search for thing, specific items in a large amount of text. And trigram is a regular expression. Um, notice that we're getting some warnings here that we can't use this uh, together. So it really depends on the type of node that you intend it to be and how you want to search for that. So I'm just going to leave this as an exact because we'll often search for an exact name. So let's go ahead and add this user.name schema. Then we're going to go up here and add another predicate for user dot email. We're going to make that a string. We're also going to search uh, for exact match, index it for that. We're going to add another predicate and call this user.password. And there is a password uh, type here. If we select it, it goes to uh, type password. And notice that we don't have any options. That's because you know we really don't want to to index or search for passwords. Um, alternative is just to use a string and then pass in a, a hashed uh, or encrypted string. You know, depending on the application. So if we want to just go with password, we can do that. So we'll add that. Um, I do want to note that because we're using Retail. Uh, the dgraph database does not allow altering the database through HTTP client. So if we were to do this in code, the schema would look something like this to enter um, a set of schema. So, you know, we'd have the name and then um, a colon and then the type and then a dot. And then for the index type we could do like in at index uh, and then say we wanted to do term or exact um, you know in that general line so there's different index types so if this was a, a int here we'd go at index and the type would be int uh, where string has several different uh, tokenizers associated, int only has one. Um, so refer back to the documentation for for that. 
I uh, just wanted to quickly show you that because I, I can't run a um, this type of mutation to alter the schema. Uh, here I have to go you know go through the um, the schema interface here. So, but we can add data through here, and we'll surround it by brackets, and we'll go set, and then we. We don't have a node to reference because we're creating a new a new node. Uh, so the way to do that is with an identifier, and it's an underscore colon, and then any valid identifier name. So if we just wanted to call it X or user or uh, Brad, you know, what, whatever we wanted to call this, um, we just need a reference so that DGRAPH you know can find the reference and and know so once it gets entered into the database uh, dgraph automatically assigns a uid and we'll see that once we run the query so we want to add uh, user.name this is the the edge the predicate so user.name and we'll just uh, we'll just call it brad and then we end it with a dot that terminates the line. So we also want to add another edge for this particular node. And we want to add a user dot uh, email. So we'll do um, oh, brad at email.com. Then we want to do a user dot password, and these can be in any order. Uh, it's not order specific; it doesn't have to be in the order of the schema. So we'll just set uh, a really secure password here. So that's it for really the um, the scalar values. So we can't really reference a subscription yet. Let's go ahead and add uh, Azure subscription schema, at least in part. So we're going to add another predicate. And we want to label this like we did with the user. So let's, uh, we'll do um, Azure subscription. We'll just do Azure sub to make it short because we're going to be typing this. And we're going to use that as a label to begin with. Uh, let's make it a bool value and we'll index it. So we'll add that. So let's add another predicate and we'll do Azure sub dot name. And we're going to make this a string and we're going to index it. Uh, and we'll do an exact hash. Well, let's uh, let's change that. We'll do a term, and then we're gonna add another predicate. We're gonna do uh, Azure sub dot, and if we look at our chart over here, um, we have ID and uh, a list of environments. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add that. So Azure dot ID. And we're going to keep that as a integer. Um, those those aren't usually integers, but we haven't used the integer yet, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll add that. Uh, let's add one more, and we'll add uh, we'll add the environment list. So Azure sub dot. We'll just say env, and we, it's going to be a string, and we're going to make it a list. Uh, we also want to index it and we'll do term um, and we can count the edges so we'll do that so now we've got partial schema let's let's go ahead and add one more uh, just so we can get a UID in there so we'll add resource group and let's add that we're gonna shorten that to Azure sub dot rg for resource group and it's going to be a string and we'll index it and make it exact right, so we have a partial schema for the azure subscription 
So let's go back to mutate and we'll add that, add a subscription. So you know, we want to add the, uh, it can be added in any order, but we'll go ahead and add the label first and then we can add the name. So Azure sub dot Then we'll add the ID, Azure sub dot ID, and we'll just type in random values. And then we have uh, Azure sub dot So now that we've added that, and I did have an error where I did not surround um, this value with quotes, um, and I did need to take the brackets off of this. The brackets are only for uh, schema. When you add the, the schema, it signifies a list type, uh, but they, they're not needed for uh, setting the data. So if we go down to JSON, we can see that the UID that was assigned to this node is uh, zero x8 which is a uh, hexadecimal for eight so if we want to associate the user that we previously added with this um, this new Azure subscription node then come back down here let's get the ID so Brad was six so we can come up here and we can have an edge from Brad, which is the hexadecimal six, and we want that to be, if we look at our little chart over here, um, just going from the subscription, the user subscription, up to the Azure. So we need to name this uh, user.subscription. Sub. And then we need to add the uh, hexadecimal. So we'll do that, eight, and then a dot. Let's run that, and it's done. And notice that you know we, we didn't have a schema uh, for for this particular uh, edge name, this predicate. So if we go back over to our our schema, notice that dgraph added one for us. So it'll do its best to determine uh, what type of schema you know, you're know you looking for. Now in this case, you know, it added a UID and there's no indices, but uh, you know, we could add reverse or count. But since it's a UID, it's treated a little differently. If this was a scalar value, then we would have to go in and add indices if we wanted to, to be able to query for that data.